The first speaker is Bruce Gleason, followed by Coralie Hobbs. Uh, you want to call the names one more time? Oh, okay, sorry. I guess I'm lucky to be first. Yeah, now, and I should, just to remind everybody, you have three minutes to speak. Mm -hmm. you don't start it yet. Uh, and you'll, you'll see the three lights there. Uh, green, it'll turn green when you start speaking. Uh, when you have one minute left, it'll turn yellow. And then when the red light comes on, we ask that you kindly uh, conclude your remarks. Uh, when you, now that you're already here, but for everybody else, when you come, please state your name and the city in which you live or the organization you represent. Mm -hmm. And if you have not filled out a blue slip, please do so. And with that, we look forward to hearing from you. Ready? Yes. Okay. I the same as you come up with Bell Park where I live. My name is Bruce Gleason, and I'm with a group called Backyard Skeptics, and we support science, reason, and uh, church and state separation. I'd like to start by saying that as many as 50% of American families, or one out of seven people, do not hold any religious faith. That's about, according to the 50%, about 11,000 people in your city don't have any type of faith, religious faith. Despite their lack of religious belief, these people hold and promote ethical values, raise families, hold jobs, pay taxes, and by every other measure participate fully in our communities. Promoting the In God We Trust display promotes a system of religious apartheid that marginalizes and excludes your community, 15% of your community. The message is very clear if you put the plaque up. Unless you believe in a monotheistic deity, you are not a respected Lake Forest citizen. That's what it means to me in my city. Do you really want to ignore 11,000 citizens' beliefs or non-beliefs? City council members need to represent all of the citizens in their community, even those who believe in different religions, which are not monotheistic or no religion at all. By voting no on this issue, you affirm to all the Lake Forest citizens that you will respect all of them equally. By voting yes, you are sending a strong message to those that do not believe in the same as the majority or second-class citizens, and is wrong for a majority to decide laws or mottos if it belittles or disrespects their citizens. This motto might even make you personally feel more righteous or emotionally stronger, but because a motto has good personal intentions does not make it right to put it in a public space, especially when it is divisive as this is. Religion is best kept at a distance in a secular government. To me and God we trust is a statement of religious faith. It does not have a secular purpose. To me and God we trust, excuse me, belief in faith should be kept at home in houses of worship and in one's personal life not in government. Historically, yes, but it is impossible for this motto to be part of our heritage because none, not one, of our founding fathers was alive when it was first suggested in 1861 to be put on our coins. It is also impossible for it to be patriotic because you do not need to believe in any supreme being to be patriotic. Neither of these arguments can be used in any reasonable way tonight to justify this motto, and you might hear some. It was only the growing religious sentiment which shifted our motto away from a secular one. Last paragraph here. It is harder and more courageous for one to do what is right and ignore their personal beliefs to better a community. I ask you to vote no and keep your community undivided instead of divided. Mark Muller. Hello, Councilmen and women. My name is Mark Muller, and I've been a resident here for 14 years. And I'm not a Christian. And I can tell you what it means to me when I see in God we trust plastered up, because it is a Christian symbol. I know that the lawyers make statements that it doesn't violate the establishment clause. Well, that's lawyer speak. And you're either a fool or a lawyer if you believe that. Because when I look at this, and I see it, it is offensive to me. And I read, and people tell me, 
you shouldn't be offended by it. And I'm tired of Christians telling me what I shouldn't be offended by. Because it is offensive to say that they are telling me how I should think and how I should feel. And you want to put this up here. I walk in and I see City of Lake Forest. Welcome. Welcome to all. Government for all. I see in God we trust. And I see divisiveness. I see this isn't the council of Lake Forest, the city council. This would be the city council of Christ. And is that what you want to represent? Is that what you want to be? Do you want to be a religious symbolic, symbolic of instead of a government? What is it? Because I can tell you how I feel when I see that and how I step up every time and how I get dismissed constantly by Christians when I talk about these things. And they look at me and go, well, you just don't understand. No. They don't understand how I feel and they're projecting their feelings and telling me how I should feel. And I don't respect that. And I'd like it to stop. And I'd like it to stop everywhere. So please, vote no on this. Let's unite the country. We've had enough divisiveness. And step forward and be the ones to say, no, we don't need this anymore. We don't need to say that government and religion need to be combined. They need to stay separate. And yes, there's lots of history in this country. And we can talk about lots of history that we've set aside because it was offensive, because it was divisive. And we can talk about certain clauses in the Constitution that two weeks ago, the new Congress decided to skip when they read the Constitution because it was offensive. And at some point, we need to stop and say, we are a people united. And we are that united people. And take away those things that divide us. And please, let's make this one more thing. I fully believe in freedom of religion. You believe whatever you like, just don't try to force it upon me. Don't make laws where your religion comes out and says, you will do this because of your law, because of your religious laws. Thank you. Thank you. ...of the Orange County chapter of Americans United for separation of church and state. I'm here to ask you to oppose placing the motto, In God We Trust, in your council chambers for the reason that it violates the principle of separation of church and state, which is crucial to this country's heritage. If you assert, as you, if you as government officials assert a religious identity for the people you represent, you exceed the scope of your legitimate authority. You've been elected by the citizens of Lake Forest to perform certain tasks, and from what I've seen tonight, you're doing a pretty good job of that. But you were not elected to speak for the people on religious matters. That is not what governments in this country are intended to do. It is true, and a speaker previously refluted to this, that some courts have upheld statements like In God We Trust as being constitutional and not violations of the Establishment Clause. But the best legal argument, and it's not a good one, the best legal argument that can be put forward to say that in God we trust is not an establishment of religion is to say that it falls into the category of what's termed ceremonial deism. That means that the phrase, and the term ceremonial was actually used by a previous speaker, if you'll recall, who's in favor of this. But what that term ceremonial deism means is that the phrase in God we trust has been used and overused to the point that it's lost all meaning. It's not a religious statement anymore. It's not really about God. It's not a significant statement of identity. And I don't think anybody on either side of this debate believes that argument. We've got a lot of people speaking on both sides of this issue. I didn't sit through three and a half hours of a city council meeting, which was entertaining at times, and not so at other times. But I didn't sit through that because I thought that this was a frivolous, meaningless statement. It means something. It's a statement. When you say, in God, we trust, you are defining anyone who doesn't believe in God 
or doesn't believe in the God that the majority of people believe in, to be not a part of that we. You are defining some of your constituents to be outside of what you consider Lake Forest to be. And that's not your job. In fact, it's your job not to do that. You are not elected and you do not have the authority to speak for any of your constituents on religious matters, whether you agree or disagree with them. So I simply ask you to respect the limits of your own authority. Thank you. Mark Smith, followed by Christopher McCullough. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Smith, and I'd first like to show you money from the 1950s that does not have In God We Trust. That motto was put onto paper money in the 1950s. Prior to that, it did not exist on this money. 48 million Americans, 15%, do not believe in a God. If that was a denomination, that would be the third largest denomination in the country behind the Catholics and the Baptists. Third largest. Do not believe in a God. A proper motto should represent everyone and not leave out 48 million Americans. That is divisive. In God we trust. My name is Mark Smith. I am an atheist, and I live and work here in Lake Forest. And as a part of the we in question, I'd like to know which fictional god, Santa Claus or Easter Bunny, I'm supposed to be trusting. As it's hard and insulting to be asked to trust something that does not exist in the first place. So which god? Is it the God of the Mormons, who used to be a man and is apparently ignorant of basic DNA? Is it the God of the Westboro Baptist Church, who hates gays and American soldiers and regularly protests at the funerals of American soldiers? Or is it the God of the Muslims, who flew airplanes into the buildings on 9-11 and also has these Death to America rallies? Or is it possibly the God of the Catholics who allows his priests to sexually abuse little boys? Or is it possibly the God of the Protestants who used to burn women alive for witchcraft? Which God is it that we're being asked to trust? I trust that in the last 2,000 years, Mankind has learned not to trust these gods. These gods are divisive and push people apart. Try talking religion at a family gathering, and you know what's going to happen. These gods already have homes in the hearts, temples, and imaginations of their followers. The city doesn't need to provide these gods another home, especially here in a taxpayer-funded council chamber. Which gods should we trust? I vote 